Hello my soccer universe. We had a planned power outage this morning and that's the reason why I'm only getting late to my video on the Europa League and the Europa Conference League, which is not for lack of love for this competition, because at least this competition is living up to its name. Yes, I think the Champions League is the best competition of all the competitions that we have. It's the best competition of the game of soccer that we have. However, I'm getting a little bit tired of the same, I'm literally getting tired of, of the sameness of the teams. I mean, having three Spanish and three um, English teams, and then, you know, a sprinkling of some other nations, doesn't kind of live up to what I would expect from a European competition, which is what yesterday I thought to myself, oh, this is actually really fun. I mean, yes, we had game. We have uh, English teams. We had actually two games in England. We had actually um, uh, games played in uh, Portugal, which we had in the Champions League as well. But it kind of seems to be a whole lot more spread out. There's a, a certain variety to it. Uh, two games in Germany. Yes, I know we have the big leagues there, but there is a way more of a European variety in there than the, what we have currently in the Champions League. I know the Champions League is a reflection of how strong certain leagues are and it's all about the Premier League and then La Liga and then whoever can claw on the third or fourth spot. Whereas the Europa League actually uh, goes a little bit more in depth and because we get teams also from the Champions League down, makes it, uh, you know, spreads out the wealth a little bit more. And the same goes then to the Conference League, where we really have some uh, kind of small teams making a whole lot of noise in there as well. It was also, uh, it's a very, 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 you know, how to, how to say, finely balanced ties at the moment. It's all very much in the balance. Uh, no one really gained an advantage, especially in the Europa League, but also in the Conference League. We didn't have any big wins. And if there was a win, it was a, a narrow home win. So uh, that competition is really, really exciting. Still very, very, very much. We're in the Champions League. We have two ties that are more or less done already because of two big away wins. So also that plays into it. And because of that, um, it was also really hard to figure out which team to wear because of all the teams that I have there were some good performances there were some okay performances but only Marseille won of the teams that I have we had a lot of ties um, and since they won against Pauk I didn't feel like wearing Marseille to be honest uh, and then I went yeah, of the other teams I guess it's either Atalanta or Frankfurt where I really feel comfortable because those two teams not only did I find myself cheering for them more than a little bit but actually, I think they performed above the expectations and arguably both of these teams should, should have won. I then went for Atalanta because Atalanta have two, Frankfurt have only one shirt for now. Yes, and I have only, uh, I have only 12, only 12 teams of the 16 that are remaining uh, with, uh, actually, uh, currently only, only 11, a 12th team is on its way to me and I hope in time for the next review video. And by that time, I hope they're still in the competition, but there is a really, really good chance uh, that I might be only having 50% in each of the semifinals of the teams, which not to my liking, not to, to my liking. So my rooting interests also are very, very much um, uh, guided by which jerseys I have in my collection, although I already played with the uh, uh, thought, yeah. I might as well do come semifinals um, that I will do just one big background for all three European competitions. Talking way too much about other things already, I would say let's go into uh, the games that I actually want to start in the Europa League and with Atalanta. With the surprise, to me, this was the nah, second surprise performance, but it was a really, really surprising performance. Atalanta went to Leipzig and honestly should have won. Yes. The game on the goals ended in a draw. The game ended with 2-2 in hitting the woodwork. It was a really, really exciting game, but one that was bossed by Atalanta left and right. 
And I'm a little bit afraid that if you don't take your chances, I, I, I can show that, that there was a chance that Atalanta even loses this game later late on. Such uh, was their wastefulness. And I think going into Italy, I could be a little bit tight, but what I've seen, Atalanta really, really, really impressing me. And I mean, Take the whole Italian fact back out of it. If I just look, look at my uh, collection. I really don't want to buy a Leipzig jersey. Although it's probably of all, all the teams the, uh, that might advance, it's the easiest to get for me. I really don't want to get a Leipzig jersey. But if they make it to the semis, I probably will have to get a Leipzig jersey. So yeah, uh, I would be very, very happy for Atalanta. And yes, uh, to me, they're probably, probably the Italian team with the best chance of lifting a trophy, a European trophy uh, this season. And uh, it really paid off. I think Atalanta now at the point in their season where they say, okay, in Serie A, we probably can hang on to Europa League Championship, but we can't qualify for the Champions League via the Europa League. And they gave it all. The chances that they created was just amazing. I mean, it started early with a brilliant shot by Muriel, uh, where he just walks through the defense and unleashes a shot from far, far, far out. Uh, as I said, the shoot should have made it to me. Yes, Andre Silva hit the post, uh, but it was more or less, uh, you know, Coincidental chance, uh, whereas then um, Pajalic also hit, he hit the post from far out uh, and some chances in, uh, in, in between. Then there was a penalty for Leipzig uh, that Andre Silva gets out and Musso with a brilliant one hand save. I mean, it looked like volleyball, but he had the flat hand out. Uh, and then he saved even the rebound. The problem, the, the, the problem is a few seconds later, the ball comes in, it's up Costa. Uh, puts it into his own net so i kind of it was all in the same minute really really i thought oh this this was the goalkeeper before that he gives up the goal but on the on, on the other side i mean again the chances that atalanta missed it's just i have really hoped this will not come back to haunt them and very late on leipzig could could go for it at the moment atalanta is a 58 percent favorite due to home for the advantage to move on but yeah uh it is it is a bit uh, tight. Uh, the only win in the Europa League came thanks to Braga again, uh, against the Rangers, where, um, yeah, it was kind of a rough and tough game that Braga in the second half, uh, in the in the second half of the first, we kind of kicked it up in and in, in, in notched. They had a goal disallowed by Horta because uh, of a step on, which I think was all right, but then uh, Ruiz in the fourth gave them the deserved lead. Um, Second half, Rangers just tried to do damage control, um, from what I could tell. And so, yeah, it ends with a 1-0 win for Braga, which uh, gives Braga a two-third chance of advancing. However, I think at Ibrox and, you know, with Morelos and so on back, maybe uh, Rangers can do uh, can do something and get it at least to overtime and then moving on. But, yeah, it was not... It was not um, happiest performances over over and for rangers you know i don't look too too much at the scottish league but for rangers it was a really tough ask because uh, a tough week not a tough task to ask a uh, tough week because they lost the old form and now they're losing away to braga uh, they better get something going going in because so far rangers have had a quite successful europa league season one has to say and with an opponent like Braga, don't underestimate the Port Portuguese. I mean, I'm not discounting Braga by any means, but given the other opponents that they could, could have had, um, one might have thought, yeah, maybe semifinal is in there. The other really surprising performance to me was Frankfurt against Barcelona, because uh, no matter how you look at this game, you cannot come to any other conclusion than Frankfurt should have won that game. Uh, Musa saw early on an absolute sitter, uh, creating a few chances. Yes, Ferran Torres had a great chance saved by Kevin Trapp, but uh, Frankfurt stifled Barcelona, and I really hated the jersey matchup, by, by, by the way. I mean, I as much as I was against the Real Madrid Barcelona in black against yellow, I thought at least black again. If they would have played in yellow in this game, it would have been a little bit more indigent. But you know, it's basically—I mean, I have one Frankfurt jersey in red, but it was black against this uh, grayish. It didn't look, didn't look very appealing, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, uh, Frankfurt really stifled Barca. They 
got a penalty that yeah was rightfully i don't know why the austrian car commentator thought it was a penalty because you see busquets is clearly playing play, playing a ball but frankfurt were the better team in the first 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 half and a big credit has to go to oliver, oliver klausner and how he adjusted his team the only thing going forward they need to take the chances because the pressing that did barca did not like that at all and this is a type of physical play that barcelona are not used to because in Spain, this is not what's happening. Uh, they got, Frankfurt then got the deserved lead through Ansgar Knauf in the 4 4 4 48 minute, where uh, he just, the ball come, 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 comes out the corner, kick it to him, I think he bounces one, and he just unleashes a shot, goes right into the, in, in, into the corner. And I have to say, it, it's not that I really do not dislike Barca, but at the moment, I'm a little bit annoyed by Barca. When I see how Frankfurt is fighting, it's really, really uh, heartwarming, and the atmosphere with Jürgen Grabowski, seemingly uh, just past a Frankfurt legend, uh, world champ champion of 74, uh, you know, there was a special atmosphere in the air uh, already, and I think uh, European night in Frankfurt is as good as it gets these days in Europe. I don't think there are many other grounds. There's one other that I can think of at the moment uh, that is still there that can make a better atmosphere. And I think the atmosphere also helped Frankfurt lift their spirits and Barca uh, were, uh, I don't want to say intimidated, but you know, it affects you a teeny little bit. However, the one goal, the one time the Barca looked look at Barca was at the e e equalizing goal where uh, already the way damn that the ballet controls the ball, I mean, it just jumps in front of it, then he plays it onto, I, I think it was De Jong, Plays it onto Ferran, back to the De Jong, back to to to, to Ferran in, 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 in the goal. Very quick, two one two movements, brilliantly. Then how Ferran Torres is uh, fin finishing that one. That was Barcelona style. But at that moment, then one might think that Barcelona could have kicked in the in, in another gear in winning this game. No, everything but the game did not really change. Even after the red card, um, I thought that Frankfurt over would have deserved to win this game. Absolutely and. I know it is partly uh, due to Oliver Glasner being a Frankfurt coach, but I have been finding a real liking to Eintracht Frankfurt. I think they are probably moving uh, up my order of German teams that I really, really like. Uh, they're at least at num number five, and I think they might have overtaken uh, Schalke or Bremen already. So I uh, really, Frankfurt is a team that I have a lot of sympathy for. was happy with that, that performance still. It would be... A really tough ask to say that Frankfurt will, are gonna move on in this <laughs> from this game. Barcelona's uh, form this tie, seventy-two percent favorites at the camp now. I think they will set it right, and Barcelona will move on. Uh, the last one uh, between West Ham and Lyon was also a really interesting one because uh, Lyon actually came to play, and West Ham was largely hanging on, and the task did not get easier when Creswell got sent off. For a, you know a foul, yes, Dembele is running towards goal, but a little bit away from it, and I think it just barely clips him. It, I found the red card a little bit harsh, to be honest, but I can see why I was giving. But it it was a rather harsh red card. And then uh, West Ham, who already weren't on the defense, just got more defensive, but they got the lead uh, through a really nicely uh, played attack over Bowen. Uh, but everything after it was all uh, OL, who were just relentless and a much better team on the night. They get the equals in Dombele, yeah, he's from North London, West, now in Lyon, he scores again in London. Kind of reminding everyone that, yeah, I was a good player once, or I'm still a good player. It was in many ways only the question, can West Ham hold out? And yes, they did hold on, but it was not, it was not easy by any stretch of the imagination. And Leo, as I said, um, probably a little bit of grief to only get a 1-1. One, one. In that one, at the moment, we have uh, Leon now a 58% favorite of moving on, thanks to home field advantage. So, uh, those are the results from the Europa League. Overall chances of winning, uh, Barcelona, are now the favorites before it was Leipzig. Now Barca Barcelona are the favorites ahead of Atalanta and, Le and, and, and Leipzig because the win of Atalanta Leipzig um, is 
odds on to move on to the final. So that's why the, the, the two opponents are so highly uh, ranked up up there with 22%. Then it's Braga because they are the one team that really put themselves into an advantageous position. So yeah, I think it's rather in, in, in its interest, but I think uh, Barcelona has to be absolutely has to be considered the favorites at this moment. Um, although I would be willing to take the field. And if you were to ask me. Moving on to the Conference League, we had probably the best game uh, of the evening early on between Feyenoord and Slavia. A game that for half an hour was totally dominated by Feyenoord, who got an early goal through Sinistera, rather dodgy goal, 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 goal keeping by um, Slavia who, of course, eliminated my personal lusk. Um, but with the first shot, Olajinka gives him an equalizer. And it was under controversial circumstances, because when he takes the shot, there is sore in the middle in a clear offside position, but he doesn't touch the ball. However, uh, it is in such a way that you could think, yeah, maybe he did, maybe he did get to it, blah, blah, blah. It was a tough call. It was a call that incensed the Feyenoord stuff so much that in the end, uh, many complaints and at the halftime, there was a real shakeup between the two players, especially Ole, Ole Inka and, um, uh, and an assistant coach from Feyenoord. Uh, but I actually saw, oh, the nerves are not with Feyenoord at this moment, and that's exactly how, 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 how they play out. Feyenoord still had largely control, but in the second half, it was a very, very open game. And Slavia Prague then took the lead through Jura Sor, who were just uh, on the line. Feyenoord couldn't, couldn't, couldn't get, get cleared. However, then uh, Senesi, um, basically more or less with his chest, gets the equalizer in the 7th, 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 4th minute. And then... Uh, a free kick from uh, Kirkju is again the goalkeeper leaving the near corner open. I mean, it goes around the wall into that uh, side of the goal. Didn't look good, but you thought that Feyenoord had, had found the winner. And I am honest, Feyenoord definitely is a team that I would love to see go far in this competition. I, again, last connection with Trauner being there. But also, you know, I, I actually wouldn't mind if, if we had in the conference like a Dutch final. That, that would actually be something brilliant to, to win us. But uh, it will be tough for Feyenoord. Because very little, th you thought they hang on to, to, to the win. But Slavia is a really, really tough, tough out in many ways. And in the absolute last kick of the game, they snatched the equalizer. And again, the Feyenoord defense didn't look quite right there. And with that goal, the balance of power moves now over to Slavia, who is like 57% favorite over Feyenoord to advance, and again, I don't have a Slavia jersey. So, that, that would be one. Another jersey that I don't have is Bodu Glimt, uh, who played against Roma. Roma this time said, now nah, we are playing in our first team jerseys, because, you know, those beautiful blue jerseys, as good as they looked, they did not bring us all that much luck uh, in Norway when we went there in October. Well, the Red Shirts didn't bring much luck either, but I think the game was much more even. Uh, kudos to all the Roma fans. Most of them were flying in, but I heard there are a few that were driving all the way from Rome up north of the Arctic Circle. I have to say, I think a huge factor in Bode Glimp's rise. Yes, their style of play is something very unique and very hard to play against. Reminds me very much of Lusk in the best times. But then they have the additional advantage that you have home field. You play on a plastic pitch and you play way up north in very unusual conditions in a stadium where all the spectators are on top of you. But the Roma, I think, did the job overall well. I mean, that the game was finally balanced. There's no question about it. Boyd Guy gave it, gave it uh, Roma a really hard time. I mean, uh, Lorenz Pellegrini gave Roma the lead. You thought, yeah, this might be a different tune to what we had before. However, after the half, uh, a Saltman's shot is deflected and it looked horrible for Rui Patricio because he, 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 he kind of it looks like he lets the ball go. But when you see in replay the, the, the deflection, yeah, it's a 1 1. Of course, the crowd going nuts so far so that the TV picture actually went out, at least where from where I was watching. And then the game really was in, in the balance and is, is decided by Wettlesen where Ibanez. No. Uh, not Ibanez, Vinya. Uh, Vinya, who, who actually calls the foul, deflects the ball into the net. A ball that, that would have gone wide and give Bode another late win like it had, they had against Alkmaar. 
And now the question is, will Roma overcome the odds? At the moment, Bode are 57% favorite to advance. Again, finally balanced, Roma should be considered a better team, but Bode have given them a whole lot of trouble and it's not inconceivable that the Norwegians will continue their fairy tale run. Less against PSV was actually a pretty interesting game but no goal scored it was very tightly balanced and that's exactly how it finished a nil nil giving all the uh momentum over to psv let's see six sixty two percent speaking uh, i said i want to have, have, have a touch final one last thought on feyenoord i thought this feyenoord 3-3 reminded me a lot of the psv 4-4 against copenhagen could it be that feyenoord will go to prague and just win three nil I don't know. I don't know if Feyenoord is already that strong. But as I say, PSV are now favorites to reach the semifinal over Leicester. But I think that ties also everything but done at this very moment. And then in the end, uh, Marseille against Pauk. First half, it could have gotten ugly for Pauk. Gerson, uh, it looked offside, but when you look at it, just at the moment, play, it was just not on offside. The way Jared Gerson puts it in. And then Payet with the goal of the evening. And that's despite Ansgar Knauf. The way he hits this ball. It is such a satisfying sight. I mean, perfectly hit. There's hardly any movement, and the ball curves upward in, in it. an absolute screamer. Uh, Pauk seemingly rattled. I really thought uh, they uh, it will be a beating because Marseille was so tall in the first half. They shake themselves off, get a goal, and then hang on. Yes, there were a few scenes where Marseille uh, probably could have scored. I also necessarily didn't like how the Pauk fans we're pelting Payet at the corners in his own stadium. That's gonna be an interesting game uh, in um, uh, in Thessaloniki. Yeah, I think Marseille is by by the way the other uh, city that can make a great atmosphere. I also have to say, I mean, uh, Pauk is one of the hottest grounds in there. So yeah, it ends two one, and yeah. I think Park got the maximum out of, out, of, out of that one. If you look at the overall chances there, um, it is now PSV 23, 3% again because they have a sl they have a relatively I don't want to say easy path, but they have the uh, a, a fortunate you know uh, you are not likely to play Bodo instead of Roma. Take it as it is. Um, they are the favorites ahead of Marseille, and then it's Roma, then it's Leicester and Bode. So Roma is still, of course, a more highly rated team, but uh, their chances are taking a hit because Bode are favored now to move on over them. So yeah, that was it from uh, yesterday evening. It was a thoroughly entertaining evening. As I said, I really, really like these competitions, both of them. It gives me a sort of a variety that I really miss and the action is also quite good. And there are many great stores, store lines in there and I also do like that there are a few historic teams in there that are not Champions League level anymore but it's good to see these names. I mostly think about Feyenoord there but there are other, oh, oh, uh, but, oh, like West Ham is also an uh, absolute great story to have them in there. So let me know what you thought about the happenings yesterday uh, in the evening. Uh, who do you think will win either comp competition? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel and we'll see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!